here we go. Grab your chair. Grab your chair. We're going to start out with some basic, basic sit to stands. You know the drill. You know the drill. We're going to back up to the chair. Roll the shoulder blades back nice and easy, bringing the butt down, keeping the shoulders back. Soft, soft, soft. Mary, you were talking about only leaves should fall. Stepping on is one of the major programs that goes with that. These are going to be the stepping on exercises we're going to do. So some of you know them already. You've done them. Roll the hips out to the edge of the chair. Walk them out. Walk them out. Make those muscles work. Start with the hands on the thighs. We're going to come forward into a forward hip hinge and then pushing up on the thighs, rolling the hips forward underneath, driving up through the heels. Backing up to the chair and back down again. If that was easy for you, hands up on the chest. <laughs> right here is where you want those hands. Again, rolling forward and pushing up through the heels of the foot. Feet. Step back again and set yourself down nice and easy on the chair. Nothing to that. Nothing to that at all. Kind of let the hangs, arms hang at the side and do it. Now you don't have that weight, that momentum of the arms to help you. Work your way out to the edge of the chair. Walk it out. And then just hands down to the side. Makes it a whole lot harder as you go forward and up. Step it back. So you may not be in any of those places. You may need the arms of a chair to help you get up out of the chair. That's fine. Then you use those arms on the side of the chair. The problem is if you don't have, if you're not sitting in something that has arms on it, we have this terrible habit of leaning way forward. And I've seen so many people do this and push down on the table. Well, now you've got all your weight forward. You're on top of the table. You're leaning over it. You're pushing all your weight down on one side. So the table better be pretty stable. But your head is also usually below the heart at this point in time. And then you try to push up through. Nothing is working the way it's supposed to. So that's why you want to get used to this standing up without having to push on something. And if you do, it's the thighs that you drive up through instead of using something that's around you because the thighs are always there. The lower you sit in a chair, we're going to go back down one more time. The lower you sit, the lower the seat is, the harder it is to get up. So if you sit down on a couch that's soft on the cushions, and you get down in, it is really hard to get out. That's when you do that struggling to get to the edge of the couch. First of all, try not to sit on those things. Those are terrible. If you do, it's pushing on the thighs to get up. That is the best way you can do it. But try to stay off of those chairs or off of those seats where you're down low like that. All right, one last time. Up we go. However you want to do it, to standing. All right, here we go. Sideways walking. Shoulders are back, chest is out, picking the feet up. It's just a step to the side and over. Four steps, one, two, three, four, three, and four. Going back, one, two, three, and four. So what we're concentrating on, you can put your hands wherever you want, hips, whatever. What we're concentrating on is picking that foot up, bringing the heel up first, off the ball of the foot, stepping to the side, ball of the foot, Heel back down again. So it's up and over and in. Other one or one more time back and there. Now stepping back again. Front foot trailer leg gets picked up just as high as that front leg did. That's the harder one. That's the one we like to just drag along. We don't want to do that. We want to step, step, step. And step. So a good way to do this, if you can, in a hallway where you've got walls on both sides of you, walk sideways down the hallway. Keep your hands out so that if you do need it, you can fall into the wall and step your, or hold yourself. But step all the way down as far as you can or on a countertop, depending on how long your kitchen is and how long your countertop is. And then you can get that longer sense of feel. You're going to feel it in the legs. You're also working the outside of the legs, those quadriceps. Um, and the abductor muscles on the outside of the hip. All right, we are going to work the abductor muscles on the outside of the hip. Toes are forward, you're next to a chair, hang on to it. You wanna keep yourself upright. 
so that your torso does not lean out to the side. This does not work these muscles. That's just a balancing act. You're like in a circus with that. You want to stay right over that stationary leg, picking up the side, that one foot, toe pointed forward, leading with the heel almost, and bring it back in. Stationary leg, little bend in the knee. You don't want to lock that knee out. That bent knee gives you all sorts of room for fudge. So you, if you do start to get a little wobbly, you can adjust through that knee. If it's locked out, you've got to unlock it first before you can get yourself stationary again. So bring it out, lead with the heel. You're going to feel it in the opposite hip as well, probably more so because it's holding it in. Don't let that hip drop out to the side as you pick the foot up. It's right straight up, foot out to the side, and back in again, out. Squeeze it. You want to feel, when you get the foot out to the side, contract the muscles in the glutes and in the outside of the hip, just squeeze the glutes tight. You'll feel everything tighten up and then bring it back in again. Those are the muscles you want. Those are stability muscles. Those are the ones that keep the hips from going side to side as you walk. When you're standing upright, if you get off on the edge like this or to the side like this, you're putting all sorts of stress on the hips on a specific point in the joints instead of when you're straight up, you're distributing that weight all the way around that muscle or all the way around that joint. Up and back in one more time. Take it out, up straight and back in to the other side. To the other side, Batman. All right. If you're ready, shoulder blades are back. Pick that leg up. Right out to the side, leading with the heel. Toe is forward. And back in. Both hips should be working for this one. If you feel the hip drop out, bring it in. Straighten that stationary leg out. You want to be right over the ankle. Or you line up with the hip, the knee, the ankle, and the toe. And back in. Out. If you find yourself off to the side like this at an angle, you look down, you're not looking right down at the toe. You should be looking right straight down at it. Up, hold, and bring it back in. Hips should be working. The other thing you want to make sure of on this one, when you do this, shoulder blades are back, chest is out, you're in a neutral position, and that foot is in the same plane as the other leg running right next to it and back in again. Oh, those work the hips for me. Up, last one. Hold and bring it back in. Whew. All right, tandem stance, not happenstance, tandem stance. One foot in front of the other. I think there's a song like that. Try not to have the heel touch the toe. Heels touching the toe causes tripping, where we try to, we step on the heel, or where the heel steps on the toe because we're trying to come down right in front of it. Give yourself a little room from that back foot and the front foot, just a little, and just get used to this feeling. Take, take your hand, hold on to the chair, and then lift up. You have a little bend in both knees. Weight is from the ball of the foot to the heel on the front and back foot. There's a tendency to lean backwards when you do this and put all the weight into the back leg. Come forward. You want to be over the middle of your base of support where you've got the most stability. And just hold in there for a couple seconds. Okay, that's enough. Other side, same thing. One foot. If you can't put one foot right in front of the other and you can't get your balance that way, bring the back foot up and around the heel of the front foot, give yourself a little bit of separation between the two and bring the foot up a little bit. That's gonna give you a little more balance. Little by little, you can start working your foot back and around behind the other one, little by little. Some people cannot do a tandem stance. It's just not possible for them. That's fine, get as close as you can to it. What you're doing is you're limiting the base. Your base is much smaller now, much narrower. All you want to do is be able to stand not just with your feet wide apart, but when you bring them in together, because there's a number of times that your places where you're not able to get a full stance, either there's a lot of people around or it's an aisle where you don't have as much 
much uh, room like going to a theater and trying to walk down the aisle. And back again. That is the tandem stance. Then there's tandem walking. Hold on to your chair, please. Please, please, please hold on to your chair when you do this. Putting the one foot in front of the other and then coming forward, picking the back foot up, heel first, then ball of the foot, coming up, bringing it around and stepping. And then the same with the other foot, around and up. If you're super comfortable with this, okay, you don't need to hang onto the chair, hover over it. Counters and hall walls, walls in the hall, walls in the hall, halls in the wall. Um, make this a lot better because you can walk for a distance with that heel toe forward. Back is a lot harder. Be careful with that one if you're going to try backwards. It is a lot harder. Make sure you've got something near you that you can hang on to so that you don't fall when you do those. Tandem stance walking is probably one of the hardest things you'll do. And it is one of the better things because it works the hips, knees, and ankles. Super good for working your ankles. And ankles need to be strong. We get really weak in the ankles and we need to strengthen those up. All right, next one. We're gonna go seated. Seated we are. So sit to stand, stand to sit. Back up, back of the legs against the chair bringing the butt down, and you're there. All right, first thing we're going to do is bringing the heels up off the floor. We could have done this standing. We didn't. We're just going to bring the heels up in a seated position. What I want you to work on, because you're seated, is getting the ball of the foot all the way across. Every one of those knuckles is touching the floor, from the great toe all the way to the little toe. Bring the toes up off the floor and just bring the heels up. Strengthening these muscles in the back of the calf, or in the calf, the calf muscles, in the back of the lower leg. And you're also getting those heels up, stretching out those muscles in the bottom of the foot. And back down. Bring it up. Roll the shoulder blades back. Keep your posture, hands on the thighs. And just concentrate on the feet being flat on the floor. They're going to want to roll out so that your all the weight is in the little toe. Bring them in so that the feet are flat. You want to feel ground underneath every one of those knuckles. And back down one more time up. Hold it. Pick the toes up if you can, as much as you can. Get the toes up off the floor. You want to stop putting all your weight into the toes, which we like to do, because it's easy, but that's not where their weight is meant to go. Those muscles are very small in the toes compared to the rest of the legs. All right. Next, what we're going to do is raising the feet up in the front. So pivoting off or coming off of the heels, bringing the toes up. You're going to feel a stretch in the calf muscles, the ones that we just worked. You get a good stretch for them. Bring the toes up as high as they'll come. We want to get used to bringing the toes up. So when we walk and we lift the foot, we also lift the toe so that we don't drag it. We have a tendency to drop it down. Muscles get weak in the front of the, of the leg and lower leg. The shin muscles can't lift that toe, and then you drag that toe along. That makes it almost impossible to walk on anything that's uneven, like grass, um, dirt, things where you've got an uneven, because you've got to be able to get that foot up and toe up as you're walking and back down. This isn't a lot of move. You can't get the foot up all that high this way. It's a really small move, but little by little, you can get a little more out of it, and you want as much as you can get. Feel the muscles working in the front, in the shins. Feel the muscles stretching in the back, and release. One more time. Bring them up. Hold on. And back down again. So we worked the toe to bring it up. We picked up the heel. Now we're going to bring up the leg and work on the quadricep, which lifts the lower leg, getting it up off the ground too. When we pick our leg up, the leg comes up, the heel comes up, the toe comes up, the whole lower leg steps forward. So every muscle needs to be strong. These are the quadricep muscles that lift the leg. As you step forward, that foot's got to reach out 
That's these muscles that do it. They contract, they get smaller, and that lifts the lower leg. And back down again. Up. You want to feel this in the front of the leg. Hold on underneath on this one. Don't worry about grabbing onto the chair or the back of the chair or trying to do it without. All you want to feel is this muscle working. How far up that leg goes does not matter. You just want to feel the quadricep working to lift that leg up. And back down a couple more times. When you get up to the top, you want to hold it for five seconds before you drop it back down. That keeps that muscle under tension, those quadriceps under tension, making them break down faster to build bigger and stronger. And they will. Those are huge muscle groups. They're used to being strong. If they've started to get weak, they will come back quickly because of muscle memory. And bring it back down one more time. Up. And back down. Other side, same thing. So we've got that, those thighs, which the muscles have always been strong or were stronger at one time. Since they were expanded, you're going to get more out of it quickly when you try to bring them back again. You don't have to build the muscle up first. You've already been there with that. It takes away one part of the process, goes right into making that muscle more dense, breaking it down so you can build it back up again. Up. Shoulder blades are back, chest is out. And back down, bring it up. It's a five second count. First couple, you may not feel it in the quadriceps by the time you get to four or five, you should be feeling it. These are exercises. The ones we've been doing right here are exercises you should be doing every day. Working these muscles all the time or every other day. Back down, bring it back up. The stronger these muscles are, the better off you're going to be for everything you do. The easier life is going to be. When your lower body is stronger, you can do so much more. You can be so much more active. But you can also get around easier. And back down. Not just safer, but easier as well. Last time up. Hold. And back down again. The last one is a march. So getting right out to the edge of the chair, bringing the leg right straight up and back down. Hip flexors do all the work. Hip flexors are essential to lifting that leg up. That is the first piece of the whole process is getting that whole leg up off the ground. Then all the rest of the muscles down the chain get into um, engage so that you can take a step. But the hip flexors are the important ones. And those are the ones that people are shuffling that's because their hip flexors are so weak, they can't lift their leg up anymore. And that's where you have to have your strength. That's the first piece of this. The higher you can lift the leg, the safer you are. Then you can be walking over grass, over rocky and, and uh, big clods of dirt. You don't need to stay on sidewalks to get somewhere up. You don't have to be afraid to walk on grass or uneven ground because you know that you'll be safe because you're picking that foot up. You're not going to drag the foot. Your ankles are strong when you hit something and it's not quite flat. You're fine. All of the muscles are in place that you walk just like you always have when you could. If you've lost it, it comes back quickly too. Up, squeeze, and back down. Bring it up. Hold it. And back, last one on this side, then last one on the other side, and back down again. All right, those were the stepping on exercises. Grab, you should be feeling that all the way down the leg, from the hip all the way down to the ankle. Get the chair out of the way. We're going to do some other stuff. Grab a drink of water first, take a break. Give your legs a chance to cool off a little bit. Remember, every movement you make requires every muscle in your body to do something. Whether it's to keep it still or to hold you upright, usually to hold you upright when you're walking. But it's also everything from the hips down is all part of the walking process. It is not just the hips or not just the hip flexors. 
through the quadriceps. It's every muscle all, all the way down from the toes all the way up to the hips. And then the core gets involved in keeping you upright and straight. All right, here we go. Out, out, in, in. That's it. Just that easy. But making sure, thinking about the process of picking the foot up, heel first, then the ball of the foot, lifting the leg up as high as you can. Well, not as high as you can, but giving yourself a lot of clearance with the floor. Out, out, in, in. This time, as you get wide, stay out there and just keep marching in that wide stance without pushing yourself too far. Up and up. You're feeling the foot flat on the ground. Up. Ball the foot to the heel. Inside to outside. You knew I'd think of it. And bring them in and bring the foot up. Hiking, hiking, walking right here. I was hiking this weekend, walking right in the middle. So it's out, out, stay out for eight counts. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring it in for eight counts. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four counts each. One, two, three, four in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four. <sighs> that gives you that ability. If you need to get around something quickly, you can push off and move yourself to the side. Balance is if you see an obstacle getting over or around it, getting past it without tripping on it. That is balance. All right. We're going to go heel raise. Up, just like we did when we were on the floor or on the chair, to a squat. Roll the hips. Come up on the balls of the feet. And back down again. Up. And back down. This time, as you come up, arms up. Arms down and back. Swing them up as high as you can get them. Staying on the balls of the feet. Trying to not put all the weight into the toes. Up. Foot is flat on the floor. Ball the foot to the heel. And back down. Swing it up. Arms up overhead. And back down. Last one up. And just doing this makes you more confident when you walk. And back down again. Because you're going to have this feeling. People are really hesitant when they walk. And the more hesitant you are, the better chance you have of falling because you're just not taking your normal stride. And the more confident you can be, you pick that foot up, you do your regular walk like you always have, and you're safe. You're safer. Safer. All right. Legs out wide. We're just going to do a side-to-side -side shift. So hand on the thigh and push it up. Other side, same thing. Butt goes right straight back. Knee stays over the ankle and up. Down and back up. As you go down, bring the arms out front and come back up over the middle. Feel a stretch in the inner thigh. Feel a stretch in the hamstrings of that lead leg, the bending leg, the bendy leg. Up and in, this time up over the top of the head. Whew. As high as you can get it. Stretch out the chest, stretch out the front of the shoulders. And back down, up. And now as you come to the middle, get it nice and high all the way up. And back down again. Up. And back down. Last one, bring it up. Arms down to the side. Kind of a warm up, stretching out the different body parts. We didn't do that in the beginning. We're going to go into a squat. Just a nice easy squat. Nothing else, just right down here. Knees over the toes, roll the hips, not past the toes, over the laces of the shoes. Down, butts back, put your hands on the thighs, keep the shoulder blades back this way, and up. If you can, air squat, hands up front, back, keeping the shoulder blades back, keeping the chest up. Remember, shins and torso should be in about the same 
plane. All right, this time as you're down in that, come up on the balls of the feet and then back up again. Feel like I'm under arrest. Sorry. Hands up. Down in a squat, heels up on the balls of the feet, knuckle all the way across and back down. Uh, heels down, you come up. One more time. Raise the heels up and back down again. This time we're going to go down. Heel up on one side only. And then as you come up out of the squat, bring that knee up and back down again. So down in the squat, one heel up, pushing through that other leg, bring the knee up and back down. Should be a smooth move. Fine motor muscles right here. Down and up. That knee is coming up as the foot's coming up, as you're coming up. Knee comes up as the body's coming up. Down and up. Down and up. Now you can get the hands involved too. Heel up off the ball of the foot, standing. Stationary leg has a little bend in the knee. End up. Working upper body and lower body together stimulates the brain and the muscles. Reworking the way the signals travel from the brain to the muscles. Down and up. Down and up. All right. Whew. Next. Step out. Step out. Out and out. You're going like, what's wrong with this? What's so hard about this? Nothing, but just wait. It gets better. It gets better. It does. Out and in. Out and in. If you need a chair, have it in front of you, but hover your hands over the chair instead of using it to hold you unless you absolutely need it, then put the hands back down. You want to be safe, but you want to challenge yourself. Up. If you just hang onto the chair and you can bring your legs up, no problem. We're not doing what we need to do. You need to balance on that single leg. And in, out, and in. Arms up, foot out, and back down. Up and out, and back in. Working the ankles, working the knees, working all the muscles up the side to flatten that foot out and put you right over the top of it, working the core muscles. And now, arm and leg on the same side, not the other side, no balance on the other side. All core, up and out, up and out. One more time each side. One there and in, one there and in. Your legs should feel this. Balance exercises is strength exercise for the lower body. All right, we're going to go into a reverse hip hinge. So starting out with this reverse, stop, bring it back in. Out, stagger step. Step it back in. You're on that front foot, ball the foot to the heel. That's where the drive is. That other foot comes up off the floor. All the work is being done by that front leg. Up and back down. Step and bring it up. So get down into that stagger step. Get back to this. Get down and hip hinge. Over that front leg, knees over the ankle. You're over the thigh. Shoulder blades are back. Neutral position, back of the head to the tailbone. And push it up to the front. Stepping back, hip hinge, stop it and then bring it back up again with you standing up. If you trip and you start leaning forward, you can take that back foot. You can use your core to bring the weight back to center and bring the feet in together, just being on your front leg. Step back, up over that front leg. All your weight is forward. If you were moving forward, your momentum would take you back. You pick that up and you bring yourself back to center. Step, hip hinge, and up. And now, arms back, 
and up. Skaters out and back in. Out and back. Out and back. Whew. All right, into that stagger step. Let's cool off a little bit. We're just going to take hands in right at the chest, rotating just the shoulders. So no movement now, just rotating the shoulders. Legs aren't moving. Give them a break. Roll the shoulders around and bring it in. Other foot forward, same thing. So you're in a stagger step. Left foot's out front. Hands on the uh, shoulders. Those things, chest, shoulders. Shoulder chest. Rotate, bring it back in. Step forward, rotate. Don't turn the hips. Knee stays forward, toe stays forward. As long as you keep those forward, you're not gonna turn the hips. And bring it in, other side, out. Rotate, and bring it back, arms out to the side, same thing. Stepping forward, arms turn, bring it back to center. Concentrate on keeping your hips forward. This is where your balance is. You're right between the two. If you start spiraling, if you're walking and you get tripped or you turn, you lose your balance with momentum and you're taking a turn, you want to keep those hips forward at all times and then bring the rest of the body back to that place. Out. You want to have a place of stability and that is right there, right in through the legs right through the hips and back in, out, rotate, and back in, other side, rotating over that extended front leg, turn, and bring it back in. We're gonna make this a little more fun. As you come forward, arms up overhead, rotating the shoulders, you'll notice you wanna turn out, the leg wants to turn, you wanna come over on the side of that foot. As you make that rotation, weight is up high, taking you even more to the side. And bring it back in, bring it down. Weight up high makes you more unstable. Around and back. I guess tall people are unstable. No, that's not true. Up, rotate. I'm not tall, so. And bring it back in. Last one. Up around and bring it in. Last thing we're gonna do is a side bend, stepping forward up over the top. Roll the shoulder up and over. Weight wants to take you that way. Core is holding you right, or your hips are holding you right up in the middle. Up, over the top. Again, if your start, if your weight is top heavy and you start falling to the side, you want to get right back to the middle again. You always want to be back in the middle. That's where your base of support is. You want to be over the top of it. Down and up. Other side. Down, over, and back up again. All right. We're going to step out. Butt back. Bring it up. Bring it in, other side. Step out wide, toes, knees, everything's forward. Butt goes back, knees over the laces of the shoes, and push up. This time, step out to the side. Take that leg that's out wide, bring it behind you, and then bring it in. So it's out wide, into a squat. Take that foot back, and bring it back to the middle, standing up. So you've got a squat, a wide squat, into that squat position, lunging backwards, and then pushing up, coming forward. Out to the side, back, and up. Out to the side, into a squat, reverse lunge, up, out, butts back, step back, and push through. Now, taking that momentum a little step further, out to the side, down, step back, step up, and come to center. 
out to the side, down. Throw your momentum backwards, stop it, throw your momentum forward, and then come back to the middle. Core is in control here. You are in control through the hips and through the center of your body, those abs. Out to the side, step back, step up, and stop right in the middle, standing up again. Out to the side, squat. Back, up, and to center. Little bit more, little bit more, last one, last one of this progression. Step out to the side, butt back. Step back, and this time, instead of foot forward, bring it up and back down. So we're taking that high knee like we did before, adding the squat, adding the lunge, out to the side, into a squat, step back in a squat position, step up, pushing through that front leg, bring the knee up and down. It's a smooth move, out and down, back and up. Out, down, back and up. Out, down, back and up. Last one. Out, down, back, and up. Weight shift, dynamic movement, agility, stationary balance. We did it all. We did it all. That was our balance class, start to finish. All right. So here we go. Stretching out. Fingers intertwined. Palms facing away from you. So that was... My mom is the one who suggested that we always do a balance class for the first class and just go through all the basics again because it is so important down in the side. And so I've tried to stay with that. It really, I agree with her completely. Down and back up over to the other side that it is good to have that reinforcement, that refresher all the time because we always have to be conscious of it. And if we don't think about it, we stop thinking about it and back up again, arms behind the back, roll the shoulder blades back. Deep breath in, stomach out, and exhale. Stagger step, reaching forward, roll the shoulders forward so that you're stretching out that upper back. Deep breath in, and bring it in. Other side, same thing, feet apart. Reach the arms out, roll the shoulders forward so you feel the stretch through the upper back. Deep breath in, exhale. Let's take that a little more into it. Fingers intertwined, palms away. And now roll the shoulders out. Feel even a better stretch through the upper back. Do it a little bit at a time. Give those muscles a chance to warm up. And bring it back in. The harder one, palms right straight down. Fingers intertwined, palms away. Roll the shoulder blades back. This one takes a lot of stretch. It's good. You need as much stretch as you can through the hands, through the arms, through the shoulders. Again, we stop using that stretch. We stop using the reach and we lose it and bring it back. But we can get it back. Muscles don't get short. Muscles get tight. So they're still there. They're still as long as they ever were. We just need to get them back out to that distance again. Hand across the front. Back of the hand against back of the hand. Roll the shoulders around. Knees stay forward, hips stay forward. Rotation happens through the shoulders. I see people turning the hips all the time on this one. That doesn't stretch the shoulder anymore. And other side. In fact, it stretches it less. Around. Then all we're doing is putting stress on the lower back, which doesn't rotate anyway. And bring it back in. It's the middle of the back that rotates. So when we take and rotate the shoulders. We're taking the middle of the back where it's supposed to rotate and stretching it out, warming it up, making it flexible like it's supposed to be. Palm up, arm behind the back. Roll the shoulder blades back, open up the chest. Pull that back just a little bit, deep breath in. And exhale, bringing it down. Other hand, same thing. Palm right up towards the ceiling, bring it back. Reach back on that shoulder. Deep breath in and exhale, bringing it back down again. A couple times up overhead, deep breath in. And 
one, deep breath in through the nose, push it down into the lower part of the lungs by pushing the stomach out and then exhale as hard as you can. And again, up overhead, deep breath in through the nose, forcing the stomach out, forcing the air down and exhale. One more time, up overhead. Deep breath in, stomach out and exhale. I will see all of you Wednesday. Thank you for being here today and exercising with me. I really appreciate it. Come back. Come back.